As we saw in the first movie of this chapter, we're going to start building our login system by writing an entrance page in static HTML and then we're going to write the login script which is going to contain the form where the user can enter their username and password. The entrance HTML page is so simple that it doesn't bear me going through each tag and typing it out. You can find the source for this on the examples folder on this CD-ROM along with the other scripts. The most relevant thing about this page is the fact that it contains a hyperlink which leads to the login page. There's also a hyperlink to the registration page. We're going to do the login page first. So let's start scripting that out. I'm going to start that with a session start command which has to come at the beginning of our script before we've served any HTML to the client or the user's browser. We're then going to set up a page with a title and body section. contains the heading login and then we're going to have some script. Before we write the script I think we would be better off to quickly write out the form that we're going to use to deliver the variables that the user enters to the script. Now, this form is going to work pretty much the same way as the other forms we've used before, but we're going to use as the target the same name as the script itself. Let's give the script its name, and that is login.php. As we can see, this script calls itself with this HTML form. So when the user enters their data into the input fields, the data will be returned to this very page. We'll see why this is a good idea when we get to writing the script. first piece of data that the user is expected to enter is their username, and then they're asked for their password and we're going to use an input type called password so that the stars or asterisks will be shown instead of the letters as the user types them in. And then we need a submit button and we're going to put l the word login on there. That's the end of our form and that is the final part of our page. Now, this is all the HTML part of this page, but the interesting bit comes in at the middle. First of all, let's put a condition in. What this condition is going to do is it's going to check to see if this page has been called by itself with the relevant data or if it's being called for the first time from entrance.html or from any other part of the website. So if the if this page is called by itself then the two variables user and pass will have been delivered by the post method to this page. Therefore, these variables should be available to the page. So we can use that as the test condition. Then we're going to test for a variable called logged in user. 
and we're going to check that that is the same as the username that has just been supplied. Now the logged in user variable is what we're going to register the user variable if we have successfully logged in the user. So in other words, this condition tests whether the user is already logged in, in which case we want to give them an error message. So we're going to use their name to refer to them and say you are already logged in. And then we're going to put something along, some hyperlinks that will send the user to the main page or to the logout page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to the top of the script and declare a variable here which is going to contain that data because we're going to need to use that more than once. So here's our link to the main page. And we can add the next part by using the combine concatenation operator to add the next part of text to what we defined in the first line. And that's going to be the logout link. Once we've defined those two variables, or that, sorry, that one variable, in fact, this is possibly too confusing. So I'm just going to run those two lines together. It makes for a long line of PHP, but that's just a couple of hyperlinks, so we don't really need to need, need to see it to appreciate what's happening with the script. So down here, instead of echoing the text of the links, we're just going to echo the links variable. Then we're going to exit the script because the rest of this doesn't need to be executed. However, if the user is not logged in under the name that's just been passed to it on the form, so this is a non-logged in user trying to log in, or a user who's already logged in but not under the name that they've just passed through the form, then we want to check the data that the user has given us against the database. So we're going to set up a connection and it's very inadvisable to simply specify a host with no port or password arguments um, in a real situation. We're going to look at this later on. Just for now, we're going to be still using localhost and keeping it very simple. But I should stress that this is only for our development situation on our local machine and doesn't provide adequate security. But we'll look at that later on. Then we're going to select the database that we created for this login system. And we're going to run a query similar to the one that we ran from the MySQL command prompt in the first movie. And what that's going to be is select star from users where name equals now we're going to have to put a single quote, double quote to break out concatenation operator and the user variable. Concatenation operator, double quote to get back in to the string and a single quote to indicate that the value that we're trying to um, compare to the name field has concluded. Then we need another condition which is that the password column in the users table equals, and here we're going to use the password function, the MySQL password function, to check the data that the user has given us against the encrypted data on the database. Now we're going to see if there is no result, then that's a problem. A result will be given back even if it's a result of nothing. So we have to 
allow for that kind of contingency, we're going to say, sorry, there has been a technical hitch. We cannot enter your details. And because this is not very likely to happen without a severe problem happening, we're not going to try and let them log in again because this is too severe a problem. So after that if statement, then we can conclude that a result has been returned from this database query. And then we're going to check whether there has really been a match. We're going to check that by using MySQL num rows. And we're going to say, if the result is greater than 0, which means that it was able to find a record in the users table where the name was the same as the user variable that the user has just entered in the form given at the end of this script and has been passed back to the script. And the password that they've given has also been correct. If there has been a match, then there'll be one result. There shouldn't be more than one result because we're going to try to keep the usernames unique. However, we should allow for the possibility of another part of our system going wrong, so we're just going to say greater than zero rather than one. If this is true, then we're going to set the logged in user variable to the username that was provided by the user, and then we're going to register the logged in user variable using the syntax we discovered in the movie before last. Then we'll give them a little welcome message. And we'll use the name that they have just told us. And then we're going to echo those links that we defined at the beginning of this script. And we're not going to show them the form again, the HTML form, because they've just logged in. So we need to exit our script. If, however, the there was no result found, as in no rows found in the MySQL result, then we should let them know that their login attempt has been unsuccessful. And after this message, we do want the form to be displayed again. So we're not going to put an exit statement there. Else if, now this else if is referring not to this if statement, but to, as we can see from the indentation, this if statement right up here. So if the user and password were not both entered, then this could mean one of two things. It could mean that the user has come freshly new to the site. However, we shouldn't, as I've mentioned before, expect the users to behave in a logical manner. It could also be because they filled in the username but not the password, or they filled in the password and left the username blank. So we're going to check for that kind of contingency by this condition here, which basically says if user is if the user variable has something in it or if the pass variable has something in it. We don't need to specify an what's called an XOR, which is an exclusive condition that will return true only if user or pass is true but not both because we've allowed for the condition of both in this statement up here. So if the user has only filled in part of the de details then we need to let them know that they've made a mistake. So we just tell them fill in both fields and leave another couple of line breaks. And then that's our PHP script. Let's save that 
and we're going to go over to the browser and try out our two scripts. First of all, we're going to go to the entrance.html page and we're going to choose the login. Now we're going to try a username and first we're going to try a username that doesn't exist at all and a random password. We're told that the login is invalid, which is good. Then we're going to try putting in a username with no password. We're told that we haven't filled in both fields, which is good. We should try it the other way too. It allows for both contingencies. Now, the final thing we should do is to use the data that we entered in movie one to our database to see if this really works. Let me in was the password and we're going to try logging in and it's accepted Mr. X and logged him in. I recommend with this script as with some others previously that because it's quite complicated you try to create this, duplicate this on your own system and have a tinker around and get familiar with what every part of the script is doing before we proceed to the next movie, where we're going to get the users to log out.